Hi guys! Welcome to AP Stats 8.3. Today we're doing confidence intervals for means only when you know sigma. And I know that sounds really kind of stupid because how could you not know the mean of a population but know the standard deviation? It's kind of silly. But we do it anyways and then tomorrow we'll learn about um, when you don't know sigma, what you actually have to do. Okay, <clears throat> so here goes. Um, one thing I'd like you to notice that our SOBAT for today um, is really, really, really similar to 8.2, which was confidence intervals for proportions. So I literally took the SOBAT from proportions, I deleted a few things that we don't need to relearn, and then I just changed anywhere that it said proportion, I changed mean. Uh, to say mean. So we're going to construct and interpret a confidence interval for a population mean when sigma is known. Carry out the steps for constructing a confidence interval for a population mean, blah blah blah, check conditions, um, and then determine a sample size if we have a specific um, confidence level that we want um, and with a, a specified margin of error. Okay, so um, I literally just changed the word um, proportion to mean, hence why I bolded those words. Okay, so we're doing exactly the same thing that we did last class. Yay! So hopefully you'll just get better at it. Um, okay, <clears throat> so here's the idea, right? You've got your sampling distribution um, after you've taken infinitely many, not infinitely many, but as many possible samples as you could possibly take for quantitative data. Um, you set up your sampling distribution. Here are all your X bars, right? Because every time you take a sample, you create your sampling distribution with all your means, okay? Um, your sampling distribution has um, a mean, and that mean is equal to the true population mean. So. Um, u sub x bar, and that equals your true population mean. That is unknown. We don't know what that is. Question mark. Okay, that's what we're trying to find a confidence interval for. Um, so assuming all the conditions are met in order to be able to accurately make a approximately normal sampling distribution, right, which were the conditions that we did in chapter 7, okay, um, again, which I'll go over in a minute, <clears throat> Um, you have your mean that's unknown, you've got your sampling distribution, blah, 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 your standard deviation of your sampling distribution. Anybody remember what that is? Correct. Good answer. <laughs> um, it is sigma over square root of n. Again, remembering that sigma is the true standard deviation of the population. Hence why we're going to make the assumption that we already know it. If we don't know it, then we have to do other things, and so that's not what we're doing today. Okay, so we're assuming that we know sigma. I know it's silly. Move on. Okay, so here goes. Setting up a confidence interval for x bar. Okay, you've got your statistic, uh, plus or minus your critical value times standard deviation of the statistic. Um, and actually, our confidence interval should be for mu not x bar because um, we know what x bar is. We don't need a confidence interval for x bar. We're using x bar to create a confidence interval to approximate um, the mean, the true mean, mu. Okay, so we have the same setup as the proportions, statistic, plus or minus, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so then we fill all that information in, right? This time our statistic is x bar. Um, our critical value is still whatever our z uh, z-score is that corresponds to the percent that we want in between these, you know, we want 95% in between these two spots. Okay, so we set up that um, the same way. Okay, so instead of p-hat, we have x-bar, um, and then our standard deviation um, of the sampling distribution of x-bar um, is just your sigma over root n. Okay, so we can fill that in, and there you have your confidence interval for the mean of a population. Again, remember, quantitative data is for means. <coughs> um, we use means. Okay, 
so this is our confidence interval and then you just plug in your numbers and solve. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of that. But first, you definitely need your conditions because if your conditions aren't met, then your sampling distribution isn't normal, uh, approximately normal, and then you cannot actually uh, create the interval. So let's do those conditions. And they're very, very similar to the proportion conditions. What do you think? Still need normal, still need independent, still need um, random. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so randomness. You need your simple random sample to be random. Okay, so that's either given to you or um, you have to assume it and, you know, say, we don't know if this is random, but I'm going to assume so, so that I can continue with my calculations. Um, so that, you know, you can check off based on the problem. Um, normal, uh, that means the sampling distribution needs to be approximately normal. We checked that the same way we checked it um, in chapter 7, which was um, either your sample size has to be larger than 30, or um, the population has to be approximately normal. And since we're trying to figure things out about the population, usually you don't know if that's um, if the population distribution is approximately normal. So we'll just um, we'll write both of those down though, just in case. And last but not least is the end of independence question. And so you want to check is um, each trial independent, but usually you're sampling, and so you want your sample size to be less than or equal to 10% of the population for the same reason as we did with a proportion. And then once you check those conditions, you can officially create your uh, confidence interval for mu. Again, keep in mind, this is only for um, when sigma is known. Okay, so let's go and do an example. All right, so we have a few apps um, out in the world right now that track how much time you spend on your phone each day. Um, Moment, Checky, and Calm are just a few of those. So suppose you want to create a confidence interval um, for the mean number of times people aged 16 to 24 check their phone in a day. So we happen to take a simple random sample of 100 people um, in that age range. So n is 100. Um, and then we want to find um, a confidence interval, right? We found the mean of that sample was 110 times per day. And sigma is about 50 um, checks in a day. So we're going to use the four-step process to build and interpret a 95% confidence interval. Yay! Okay, so state, restate the question. Cool. Remember, context is important. So my state was something like, um, since we know sigma, we're setting up a one sample z interval, um, and I'll, I will explain um, for means, obviously, um, and I'll, in the next video, we'll talk about the other option, um, uh, other than a one sample z interval. For the um, true mean number of times per day that people aged 16 to 24 check their phones. Um, so that's my state. My plan is going to be checking my conditions, um, random, normal, independent. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, were the 100 people randomly selected? Yes, they were, because the problem said so. So we check that off. Woo! Next, normal. Since we're dealing with sampling without replacement, and we don't know anything about the shape of the um, population distribution, n has to be greater than or equal to 30, and it is, right? n is 100. So that's checked off. Yay! And last, we're checking independence, and since... Um, the, we're sampling without replacement, um, we need to check to see if the sample size is less than or equal to 10% of the population. So uh, is 100 less than or equal to the full population of people 16 to 24? Yep, definitely. All right, so there you have it. Our conditions are checked and they're satisfied, so we're good, ready to move on to the do part. So I'm going to... Uh, start off by just drawing out and writing down um, all the info that we already have. So just kind of drew the scenario, right? We have, um, this is our, oh, here comes my mom. <laughs> Hold on. Say hi, this mommy. Is, what's the scenario? What? 
sorry. So this is the sampling distribution of X bar, um, which has the standard deviation of 50 over the square root of N, so 50 over 10, okay? Um, so let's write that down. And then here's my 95% confidence interval, right? The area that um, I've shaded, we want that area to be 95%, which means the tails have 2.5% in them. And it's going to be close to two standard deviations, but remember the, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule is like super approximate. So we use the z-score table um, to get those z values. Um, so it ends up being negative 1.96 for my z, um, uh, negative 1.96 and then a positive 1.96 um, for my z star values. So then we set up our confidence interval as our statistic plus or minus our critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. Okay, and so we just plug in all of our numbers. So we get 110 plus or minus 1.96 times 5. And then we can calculate our interval like that. All right, so I just did all my calculations. Um, 1.96 times 5 is 9.8. And then I take 110 and subtract 9.8, and then 110 and add 9.8, and that is my confidence interval. So um, when we conclude, we want to say something along the lines of um, we're 95% confident that the true mean number of times we check our phone, as mine just rang, <laughs> so I'll add to my count today. Um, uh, is between, you know, 100.2 and, and 119.8. And this is Molly. She's going to help us with stats today. Okay. <laughs> so we are, we've concluded. Okay. So different type of problem. We've got, <laughs> okay, here we go. And my mom's making fun of me. Um, okay. So imagine you wanted a 95% confidence interval, the margin of error of only plus or minus five times um, per day checked, right? So in our other example, it was, she's way cuter. Oh, I just love you. Okay. Um, it was 9.5. If our margin of error was 9.5. So we want to reduce that. So we want to find out how large a sample we need. Same kind of thing as before. We just want to take that, um, the margin of error, which is Z star. Why are you not writing right now? Uh-oh, hold that thought. All right, so we have our Z star times our standard deviation of our statistic. Um, and that needs to be less than or equal to 5. Okay, that's our margin of error. Just as a reminder. Okay? Um, that, uh, for 95% confidence interval, 1.96. And our sigma was 50 over the square root of n has to be less than or equal to 5 and now just algebraically solve and figure out what n has to be. Alright, so here's the work. I figured out that n is uh, has to be at least 384.16 and since we're sampling um, you can't round, first of all you can't round down because then your sigma won't, um, your margin of error won't be small enough um, so we have to round up because we can't have 0.16 of a person. So n has to be at least 385 in order for us to get that margin of error of 5 or less on a 95% confidence interval. And that's it. Molly, say bye.